Remember that one movie with a talking teddy bear? Well, they made a sequel, and that's why today in Flick Summary, Ted 2. The film opens with Tammy Lynn and Ted finally tying the knot, officiated by none other than Flash Gordon himself. Do you, Tammy Lynn McCafferty, take this teddy bear to be your lawfully wedded husband? Knowing Ted, this was expected. During the wedding celebration, we cut to John, sulking all by himself. What happened to Lori, his girlfriend, then wife in the first movie, you ask? Well, they got the big D. Divorced. What? Poor John. His thunder buddy asks him to cheer up a little and enjoy the party. As he should, given that a teddy bear getting married is not something you see every day. John agrees and joins Ted in his celebration. Where Tammy Lynn, our favorite bear, gush excitedly about the bright future ahead of them. Teddy, this is the best day of my life. Well, think again, Ted and Tammy Lynn. Fast forward to a year after their wedding and their marriage seems to be in shambles. My life is nothing but a comedy. The couple disagrees about Tamalyn's necessity of getting designer clothes for their job as cashiers. As the argument starts heating up, Tamalyn and Ted ultimately give each other the silent treatment, not even talking to one another at their workplace. Ugh, awkward. Oh dear, what an awkward situation. After the fight, Ted and John head to a bar where they discuss their personal lives. On one end, John is depressed about his divorce from Lori, while Ted seems to be concerned about how to make his marriage work after only a year of their wedding. John attempts to give Ted some advice, but doesn't have much to say because, well, his own marriage ended. Wow, I, I don't know what to say. As they drink, Ted encourages John to get back in the game and start dating again. But John is adamant and stuck in his grieving process. Even the bartender is attempting to flirt with John but he just won't have it, politely declining her as she gives him her number. During their work shift, Tammy Lynn and Ted continue to give each other the cold shoulder. While attempting to fix things, Ted gets a customer who happens to be Liam Neeson, out of all people. He urgently asks questions about tricks and if he's allowed to eat them, given that they are advertised for kids. So if I purchase these tricks, there'll be no trouble. You do understand that I myself am not a child. Confused, Ted quickly answers and dismisses him in order to get his attention back on Tammy Lynn. As he runs out of ideas for fixing their marriage, Ted asks a co-worker for advice, who in turn suggests for the couple to have kids. Excited about the prospect of mending his relationship with Tammy Lynn and becoming a parent, Ted heads to the break room, where his wife is, telling him his grand idea. I want to have a baby. You do? Finally, Tammy Lynn and Ted are over the moon while they plan for their unborn baby's future. As expected, Ted wastes no time on telling the good news to John, his thunder buddy for a life. John excitedly congratulates his best friend, while Ted asks if he thinks if Sam Jones, Flash Gordon, would be willing to be a sperm donor. Yeah, it's with a sperm donor. What did you expect? John tells Ted that Flash would probably be honored to help Ted birth a superhero Flash baby. This calls for a celebration. They agree to meet him later that same night to pop the big be my sperm donor question. Unfortunately for our bear, Flash has a sperm count of one, apparently. Therefore, he is completely out of the question. My sperm count's a little low. Well, how low? One. After getting no luck with Flash Gordon and a failed attempt of stealing Tom Brady's sperm, John proposes himself as a sperm donor for his kid. Of course, Ted excitedly agrees as they rapidly head to a sperm bank. After a messy sperm-filled adventure, John gets his business done and his kid, Ted and Tammy Lynn's kid, is ready to go. We then take a break from Ted and John and cut back to... <sighs> Donnie. Remember him? That crazy guy that wanted to kidnap Ted back in the first movie? Well, he's back, working for Hasbro and out for revenge. He tries to work his way up the chain, but his attempts are unsuccessful as he gets ignored by his superiors. I suppose you can tell by now who the villain of the story will be. I think you're evil! Back to our bear, Ted and Tammy Lynn are having a consultation with a doctor, who tells them they are ineligible for parenthood due to Tammy Lynn's drug use. Her ovarian canal is completely destroyed. When I saw this, I threw up, almost quit medicine. That's not the only thing though, Ted is not recognized as a person to the court of law and cannot adopt giving his state of property. With this news, a series of unfortunate events ensues giving his unrecognition as a person to the state. Ted 
In the eyes of the state, you are not a person. He loses his job, his cards get revoked, and his marriage with Tammy Lynn is annulled. Later, Ted and John hang out in a park where they discuss options for Ted to be considered a person. As they talk, John has a light bulb moment where he suggests suing the state for their violation of rights to poor teddy bear Ted. Immediately, they decide to meet with a lawyer in hopes that he will take his case. However, he shuts the pair down and offers his newly lawyered up niece, Samantha, to take on the task. Defeated and with no other option, Ted and John decide to take up his offer and meet the niece. Originally, they were displeased with the lady due to her inexperienced age. But as soon as the two saw she had a bong, they were absolutely in. No questions asked. Thus, an adventure of lots of studying, lawyering, getting high and prep for court begins. And yes, sparks fly between John and Samantha. And we love it. This is great! Back to uh, Donnie, Mr. Evil Obsessed Guy has a meeting with one of the top guns in Hasbro. Given Ted's high profile case, he suggests kidnapping the bear once again in order to see what makes him tick and be able to create thousands of Ted's all around the world. Mr. Hasbro agrees to let Donnie plan a kidnapping as long as his name is out of it. Mr. Hasbro contacts the best lawyer to represent the state of Massachusetts. You really are a bad guy. The day before their court date, the unlikely trio engages in certain activities in order to prepare for the big day. Hey, I heard Starbucks. No, you didn't. Nobody said Starbucks. All right, Starbucks. Okay, now who's in the Starbucks? Bill Cosby. You people are monsters. The following morning, Samantha makes solid arguments as to why Ted should be considered a person, but is quickly shut down when evil lawyer participates in the argument and starts comparing Ted to a toaster, thinks that shouldn't share rights with human beings. You're all terrible. Evil lawyer calls John to the stand and asks him about how he met Ted. John sadly admits that his parents got Ted as a Christmas present at a toy store. Not long after, the jury gives his verdict. They declaring Ted a property and revoking his human rights. Now that Ted is considered a property, Donnie and Hasbro can act on the kidnapping without facing any real legal repercussions. They devise a foolproof plan and set a code word for when he gets Ted. On the other hand, Ted, Tammy Lynn, John and Samantha solemnly hash their emotions out as they try to think of other ways to rescue Ted's humanity. There must be another way! Samantha suggests requesting an appeal and hiring the best civil rights lawyer in town, Morgan Freeman. I mean, Patrick Meghan. Samantha arranges a meeting with a lawyer in Manhattan, getting the trio on the road again. During their road trip to Manhattan, Ted drives the car and accidentally crashes it, leading the group to a lonelier, bushier side of town. They decide to spend the night in the bushes and figure out what to do in the morning. There, the trio encounter a huge garden of MJ and decide to partake in some smoking activities. John and Samantha finally kiss and Ted cheers the pair on. This is great! They finally get the car going the next morning and reach Manhattan, which is filled with Comic-Con goers. This will be relevant later. Ted, John and Samantha reach Morgan Freeman's building and ask him to help them out in the case pro bono. Though interested in the case, Mr. Freeman declines given the several complexities of the case and Ted's similar behavior to Justin Bieber? You could have been an inspiration to the world, could have been a leader, a role model. Instead, you're Justin Bieber. You. As they leave the office, Samantha feels guilty for not being able to pull through with the case. John consults her, but Ted is too upset, claiming that if they hadn't been all over each other when prepping for the case, they might have had a chance of winning. Ted angrily walks away and heads to the Comic Con. A Ninja Turtle, more specifically Raphael, asks Ted for a picture and lets him to a secluded room. Okay, why are we doing this back here? Well, you're a celebrity, I just don't want you to get mobbed when people recognize you. Can you guess who's honor the Ninja turtle suit? That's right, Loco Crazy Donnie. Recognizing him from the previous movie, Ted quickly runs away as a chase between the two ensues. Oh no, not again. 
Ted calls John and lets him know about Donnie, who also remembers him from the previous movie. John speeds off to the Comic Con and is frantically looking for Ted. Meanwhile, Ted hides in plain sight with a bunch of classic teddy bears that look exactly like him. Donnie manages to pinpoint him as he sings Sweet Caroline, leading our naive bear to join him in the song. Caroline! Ba, ba, ba. Of course, Donnie wastes no time and grabs him before he can react, knocking him out. Donnie hurries to the Hasbro exposition and tells the Hasbro representative the safe word, letting him know that he has Ted in his hands. Donnie and Mr. Hasbro tie the bear up in hopes to find out what precisely makes him alive. Samantha and John are still attempting to find Ted, but thanks to a couple of friends, manage to figure out their location. Mr. Hasbro abandons Donnie as John punches him, rescuing Ted in the process. It's Party time! But it's never that easy. Donnie catches up and sets up a trap which severely injures John. Given the several Ninja Turtles in Comic Con, Ted plays the song Donnie played for him during his first kidnapping and catches him when he dances along to the tune. He is subdued and finally no longer concerned. John ends up in the hospital, where his future and recovery are unknown. The next day, as Ted, Tamalin and Samantha wait for news, the doctor reveals that John has sadly passed. Devastated, the group decides to tearfully say goodbye to Johnny one last time. They don't get to be sad for too long, when John wakes up and admits it was all a prank. Ted laughs it off, but Samantha doesn't take it too well. John, being the smooth talker he is, turns her frown upside down when he asks her to be his girlfriend. Yes, victory! <laughs> Congratulations! While in the hospital, John gets a visit from none other than Morgan Freeman himself, who is impressed with Ted's sheer humanity when his Thunder Buddy was injured. Acknowledging his humanity, Morgan Freeman decides to take the case. We return to the courtroom and Morgan Freeman gives an insanely convincing speech about Ted's humanity. Honestly, his voice alone was enough to convince me. What is your name? Ted Clubberlang. He showcases Ted's empathy and love he feels over John and Tammy Lynn, convincing the jury to finally grant Ted the basic human rights he very much deserves. The talking Teddy is a person, yes! As they victoriously walk out, Ted changes his name to Clubber Lang and proposes to Tammy Lynn once again, planning to give her a wedding after their annulled marriage. Sometime later, Ted and Tammy Lynn are parents to a beautiful baby boy, Apollo Creed Clubber Lang. And that's all for today. What did you think of this movie? Would you want to have a friend much like Ted? By the way, if you haven't watched the first part, what are you waiting for? And as always, don't forget to subscribe, like this video and share it with your friends. See you next time.